from experience actually and of course you can see people around you too who you know who i mean if you give god your all you can be sure that he has your back covered he has he has you he's he's is in charge of your life hallelujah so i'm talking about apostolic mindset today the apostolic mindset the apostolic mindset of course we cannot all be apostles we, that is clear already from you know teachings about um the fivefold ministry right um we know we cannot all be past we cannot all be apostles because god has of course given gifts to the body some have been called to be apostles some are prophets some are evangelists some are pastors and some are teachers and of course, there are many other ministries. So we may, I mean, in your case, you may not even be any of these five, right? But the fact remains that you have you have a particular place in the body. You have a place in the body. And an apostle is no more important than you, right? Even if you are the if if what you do is like the finger, because if the finger is if you look, I don't know if anybody here has ever you have ever lost your fingernail, not even the finger now. You have ever lost your fingernail. Or I mean, something just happened, or you have you even have a crack on the fingernail, or the fingernail is removed. You can't be fine, right? So, and that is why everybody is important. So it's not about you know whether you are this or that, you know. So, but of course, those things are there for the sake of order, so that everybody can you know can handle their place. Everybody can man their own place in the body. So, no matter who you are, even if nobody is seeing you. You, are, you occupy a very important position because whatever part you are, whether you are the parts that are seen or the parts that are not seen, don't bother yourself. Just keep doing your own thing faithfully and God knows how to reward you. So the apostolic mindset. So like I said, we cannot all be apostles, right? But we are all required to be apostolic. Just like we cannot all be prophets, but we are also required to be prophetic. We, are, we cannot all be evangelists, but we are supposed to be evangelical or evangelistic if you like we are not all pastors but i mean we need to be able to care for one another we need to be you know there should be this kind of peer pastoring like you are your brother's keeper and all that right you, you may not all be teachers right but you should be able to you should be able to at least um share john chapter 3 verse 16 to the sinner or or as a father in the house uh though you may not be a pastor or any ministry gift so to speak uh, you know, any of the fivefold ministry gift as it were, but definitely uh, you, you should be able to teach your own family. You should be able to raise your own children in the way of the Lord. So, I mean, that's fundamental, right? We, so if you look at the fivefold ministry, right, uh, there are special offices, but then we are supposed to have, um, we are still supposed to have a bit of everything, no matter whatever else you might be, right? So, of course, those who are right now into the core of it, they have their own special demonstrations, their own special manifestations. So uh, that is the point I'm, I'm trying to make in, in introducing this topic, that we cannot all be apostles, but we are all required to be apostolic because we have all been sent. The Great Commission is for all of us. It's only for the apostles, right? So as the sent ones commissioned by Jesus to preach the gospel, we need to have an attitude, we need an attitude and a mindset that align with our mandate. Our ma what is our mandate? Very simple. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. Preach, preach it to human beings. Preach it to the trees. Anywhere you are, let even the atmosphere know that, you know, a gospeler is around. That That's the idea, right? So we can see some of... So, so, so uh, what I'm stressing there is we have been sent by Jesus to preach the gospel and we need to have an attitude and a mindset that align with our mandate. So we can see some of these dispositions in our key text. Our key text for today is from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Chapter 1 nine, Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 16 to 27. It's a fairly long one. So I'll breeze through it and then I'll try to uh, explain as much as possible. So I'll, I'll highlight some of the mindsets that characterize um, apostolic people, whether they are the key apostles, of course, we are taking this key. I mean, First Corinthians already tells you we are talking about Apostle Paul. You know, that like he's one person who, I mean, the, the man who wrote like two, two over three of the whole of the New Testament. That's a that's a lot, right? So he's he's one example we can look up to. So even if whether you are you are a core apostle, so to speak, or a, a child of God who is expected to be apostolic, you, you have a whole lot of lessons 
to learn from Paul, from his disposition, his mindset, his attitude, his courage, everything he did, very instructive for us. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 16 to 27, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me. If I preach not the gospel. Now, I mean, this reminds me of something very funny. I, I remember, I mean, well, of course, I, I'm not that old, so to speak. Um, but I mean, we hear a lot about maybe when people like Pastor Shay were growing up during their campus days. So it, it was probably difficult for anybody to say they were going to marry a pastor or they were going to become a pastor. But these days, it's like it's it's a, it's one of the fanciful things you can be, right? Like you're a pastor, uh, you know. Uh, you have everything is there's packaging there's all of those things you know how to stand you know how to speak you know how to condition yourself then i mean even the sisters these days are i mean they don't mind marrying pastors anymore because it's like it's 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 cool they want to be mommy Jew or something like that but of course just like paul is showing us there showing us that for though i preach the gospel i have nothing to glory of but no for necessity is laid upon me yeah Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. You know, when you begin to, of course, we've been praying for the supernatural lately. We've been praying a lot about the supernatural. When things begin to happen, don't forget what Paul said here. You have, even you, you let the dead rise through, through your ministry or let all kinds of things happen through your ministry. You still have nothing to glory of because it is not of you. It is of God, you know, that has done it. So I have nothing to glory for necessity. So it's a necessity is uh, he sees it as a like something you have to do, something you must just do. So, in fact, he went to this extreme end of calling war upon himself if he does not preach the gospel, because the gospel is that important. So I'm beginning to see those mindsets already. Uh, so verse 17, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. So, I mean, it's the best thing is to preach the gospel willingly. But even if you preach it out of grumbling or, or you know, anyhow, whether you like it or not, it is something you are, you are just bound to do it. As far as you are a believer, you know, uh, there's this common saying that every Christian is a missionary and every, 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 every unbeliever is a mission field. Every child of God is a missionary and every unbeliever is a mission field. So it doesn't matter whether you have been ordained to go to one part, one far place or one rural area or one distant land before you, you, you know, you, you, you realize that even in your day to day life, in your school, as an undergraduate, as some, as you, you, you know, whatever it is, you are in your workplace, you are automatically a missionary and that's the mindset for if i do this thing willingly i have a reward but if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me and verse 18 what is my reward then verily that verily that when i preach the gospel i may make the gospel of christ without charge that i abuse not my power in the gospel so you know it's very easy uh for for, for us to abuse uh, uh you know, uh, uh, our power in the gospel, right? Because the gospel is powerful. The gospel is potent. The gospel helps to, I mean, I, I just read something on Facebook not quite long that, 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 you know, no other religion or ideology or anything, so to speak, has ever transformed the world like Christianity. And that is the fact because even the the woke civilization we talk about today is is actually referred to as a Judeo-Christian civilization. That means it, it's so some of those principles, those work ethics and, you know, doing things right and everything just they all came from this idea of, of, of uh, uh, you know, J Judaism and Christianity. So some of those principles that God gave Moses, you know, and people like Joseph and all of those people and then up, up to Jesus now. So all of the, those things literally changed the course of the world, of the earth. And if you think if you think it's it's not real, I mean, if it, the, we are in the year 2024 AD, Anno Domini, that's the year of our Lord. And that refers to Jesus Christ. I mean, if, if, though the world does not like Jesus, the world is in their face. There's nothing they can do about him. They can hate on him. They can hate his church. They can hate his people. But the fact is that Jesus Christ is the greatest man that ever walked the earth. You know? So it, it's it, that. And that's the person you follow. And you must understand the gravity of that and, and walk in line with that 
Okay, verse 19. Okay, so abusing the power of the gospel, that's something that can come easily to us, especially when uh, by the instrumentality of the gospel, transformations are happening in people's lives. Some people begin to say, oh, it was when I met you that my life got transferred. It was when you prayed for my son or my daughter that his life changed. It was when my my, my son became, a, became, became friends with you that his life took a new turn. You know, that can begin to get into your head. But don't forget, be like Paul who will not abuse that's his power in the gospel because the gospel is powerful itself so for those of us that administer it will definitely carry power and that is the fact so verse 19 for though i i be free from all men yet have i made myself servant unto all that i might gain the more it's more like um the the idea of the husband as the head of the house of course you know we, we like to see that as you know, uh, one pastor will say that it, being the head does not mean the, being the head is not does not mean that it means you take thirteen meat, thirteen pieces of meat when you are eating, or you know, of, of, all of those things. Of course, there are some of those things that happen, right? But that that's not the thing. So being the head is like you are the chief servant, serving your wife, serving your children. I mean, showing them the way of the Lord and things like that. So. It, it, that, that's the kind of thing so though you carry so much power though you carry so much authority and everything at the end of the day you see you, you are a servant unto the lord for though i be free from all men yet have i made myself servant unto all men unto all that i might gain the more so sometimes you get your ego out of the way because of what you have to do for the sake of the gospel you get your uh, your shoulder parts out of the way so that you can actually be effective, be an effective tool in the hand of, of God. Okay, verse 20, and unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. You know, uh, verse 21 says, to them that are without the law, as without law, be not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. So, I mean, this is some... So it means that even the, the apostolic requires some diplomacy, not lying, right? Because generally speaking, when you say you are diplomatic, it's you are lying. But it, it's like some wisdom. You know, imagine Paul entering a place and then having been very observant, he saw that oh, the people, the people of Athens were so. Was it Athens? I think it was Athens. So, yeah, I think it must have been Athens. So where is they, they? They they had all kinds of gods, and then they weren't sure if they were they were missing out on a particular one. And they built a temple, and they said to the unknown god. So Paul had to ride on that to reach them, and then he had to tell them that see, I saw that you guys have you are so religious, you are so you, your worship is top notch and everything. In fact, you took it so to so far to the point that you even have a temple to an unknown god. And that is the unknown God I brought on to you today. So you, ha you have to meet them at, that, at their level of intelligence, at their level of understanding and things like that. So that requires a lot of tact that the Holy Spirit gives. So to the weak, I became as weak that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Now, this does not talk about compromise. It doesn't talk about you throwing away your Christian values, your 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 consecration as a believer. No, it just talks about, you know, getting to people's level so that you can reach out to them. Verse 23, and this I do for the gospel's sake. All of this is for the gospel's sake. That time where you throw away your your reputation, your 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 status and all of those things. All those times you're doing that, you're taking all of those out of the way so you can reach out to some people. It is because of the gospel, you know, because sincerely you are entitled to your status, you're entitled to, to your position in society, you're entitled to the respect that comes with whatever status you have. But then for the sake of the gospel, Paul said in, in another place, he said he counts all these things as dung, as trash, as dog shit, like um, the message <laughs> translation, yeah, you know, uses it. You know, some shit are used for, but dog shit is like utterly waste a waste right so it, it's um so so you have all of those things you have all the money you have all the status you have all the reputation you have all the everything you think is important to you but then for the sake of the gospel you cast them aside okay and this i do for the gospel's sake that i might be a partaker that might be partaker thereof with you Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. So there's a way you have to run. There's a way you have to be an you have to be apostolic to win the prize, right? And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. 
Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we, an incorruptible, are therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beat the air. So, I mean, this talks about intentionality. It's not just making any move carelessly. It's not just making any move carelessly. It's doing everything according to purpose, according to intention, according to plan. It's sticking to the plan and, and it's always checking with base, you know, because as the apostolos, as the sent ones, somebody sent you. So you are the sent one. It means somebody sent you. And the moment you stop receiving order from the one who sent you, you are on your own. And then, it, you, you, I mean, it, everything can just become a mess, after, you know, like that. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beated the air. But I keep under my body, you know, that talks about discipline. That talks about subjecting your desires, even the legitimate ones, right? But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by Less that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So that's like at the end of it all, after I've done all the things, I've, I've I have the attitude of an apostle, I have the the behavior of an apostle, and everything. Then at the end of the day, I have even delivered, helped people to come to Christ. People have been delivered from sin, from sickness, from disease, and all of those things. And you know, they end up in heaven, and then I myself be a castaway. But to avoid that, he had. He has to, you know, talk about discipline, like he keeps his body under. Okay, so in short, we, we have that, that long, long passage about the apostolic mindset, and we can already see snapshots of the kind of attitude I'll be referring to. So, of course, one thing there of that, that it's very important to talk about is the idea that the apostolic mindset is not about posturing. It's not about wearing a big title. There's nothing in calling in being in calling yourself an apostle. If you are really an apostle, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all, you know. But then it's more important to do the job than to wear the title, you know. So that that's that's a big deal. So it, it's beyond the, so an, an apostolic person has a mindset of doing rather than being called. You know, you are more. It's more important to do the job of an apostle than to be called an apostle. I think that's the idea. So the apostolic mindset recognizes that true authority comes not from titles or positions, but from a genuine connection to the divine purpose. So that's that's it. So the genuine connection to the mandate of the one who has called you, the one who has who has ordained you to be to be an apostle, right? Or or, or to be apostolic who has called you out of sin, out of from the power of darkness into the, into the, the kingdom of light, right? So, as Apostle Paul declared in 1 Corinthians 9, 16, we already saw, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yet woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. So it's more like, whether I like it or not, this is what I have to do, okay? So, I mean, so as an apostolic person, you know that posturing and title it's not a big deal. It is the action, the doing uh, that, that, that should back up your calling. Okay. So, and that, and talking about calling, right? The apostolic mindset has this attitude of obedience to the heavenly call, obedience to the heavenly call. So central to the apostolic mindset is an unwavering obedience to the call of heaven, unwavering obedience to the call of heaven. As we see in Acts 26, verse 19. Acts 26, verse 19. So in Acts 26, verse 19, you know, Paul was having, he was uh, more like def defending his position. You know, he it was, it, it looks like Paul would even e reject uh, deliverance because he wanted to appear before the big boys, the king, the governors, and all of those people. So he had opportunity to be freed, but then he just wanted to keep going until he got to until he got to uh, Caesar, right? Until he got to the number one person because he was so interested in preaching the gospel to to everybody, every layer of every hierarchy of authority, right? So and that is why he said in Acts twenty six verse nineteen. Paul said, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. So Paul uh, was, was committed to the heavenly call. So he was, he was talking about his experience, how he persecuted the church, how he even went to the extent of killing people 
you know, for that they were not in, in alignment with the Judaism with Judaism that he was practicing then. He was so he was such a zealous person who obtained letters. He had legal backing to go about killing people, uh, arresting people, throwing them into jail, killing some, uh, you know, who were going the way of Jesus. As, a, as opposed to following their, the, 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 the way of Judaism, right? Uh, you know, that, that, that was his thing. So, but then he got to that point, he could, he, he could, he was constrained, like we've seen, whereupon O King Gagipra was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. So he had a vision of Christ. He saw Christ and he went blind for some days until and Ananias prayed for him in Damascus and then he had his sight and all that. So, so here we see that this demonstrates the apostolic commitment to following the divine guidance without hesitation. So don't forget, apostolos, the sent ones, are sent by someone. And just like I said earlier, if you are, uh, once you stop taking order from the one who sent you, you are on your own. You are just running your own show and you will account for that, you know. So, the, so, so what Paul said here demonstrates the apostolic commitment to following the divine guidance without hesitation so imagine his rise was so drastic he came from you know being an extremist killing people killing christians to becoming a christian to the point to becoming a preacher in fact overnight to the point that even people he once persecuted they were they had a, a, a kind of code for that man is this person for real is he joking or is he is he trying to deceive us so that he would he would uh you know get us in and 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 do us in right like that right? so so i mean that that is so his, his his transition was so drastic so drastic that people were apprehensive you know because he was he had one thing about paul we see is that he had a prompt obedience he never hesitated as i'm going to see later he was going to asia and then he had a vision overnight a man saying, come to Europe, Macedonia, come to Macedonia and help us. And then he had to do a cost correction, you know. So even in the in preaching the gospel, right, you are not expected to preach anywhere the person who sent you has not sent you to. Does that make sense? Yeah. You are not expected. There are places where you want to go to preach and, and God is saying, no, the time is not right. Or it's not, I, I, you are not the one I'm sending there. Maybe you don't have the configuration for that place or something. So you need to know. You, we, this is very important because at the end of the day, it's about, it's about what you do. It's about who told you to do it because you can have the power to do it. But do you have the authority? I mean, Pastor always uses that analogy about power and authority. You may be able to do it. It doesn't mean you should do it. Paul could go to Asia, but G Jesus did not want him to go to Asia. Jesus rather would have him in Macedonia so that there's that a commitment to following the divine guidance without hesitation, without hesitation. In fact, some, some people will tell you delayed obedience is equal to disobedience. Well, I mean, maybe it's, it will be disobedient down the line, but the fact remains that it's the, the earlier you obey. You know, I keep telling you of my story of how um, as Bible study secretary in the uh, Campus Christian Fellowship, NIFES in Futa, uh, you know, we had this, okay, well, I, I was not Bible study secretary then, sorry. I was still, I was in 200, level, I was in the Bible study unit and then we had this teaching weekend and uh, Pastor Benga Malone was, was invited and he told us about how, you know, how he saw a vision. He was a, he attended Futa too, right? He, he studied civil engineering. He, he, he told us about how he had a vision that he, he was, he saw himself in a white lab coat and he was doing some things in the laboratory. And when he woke up, he was wondering what that meant. And the interpretation he got was that, so, uh, so God wanted him to be a lecturer, a researcher, you know, a university person, right? Researching, teaching and all of that. But then that's a, that, that's a very interesting thing because as a civil engineer, right? Imagine if you're a highway engineer, taking contracts, making money, that's that's way more lucrative than being a, a researcher, being a lecturer, right? Especially in Nigeria, you understand. So he he graduated, maybe got done with NYSC, and then he he started <laughs> he started doing he started working on contract jobs and everything, making money, having a nice time, and all that. And along the line, he had an accident and broke his leg, and was. It was admitted into FMC or war. So it was on that bed that that vision came back to him and was like, wow, this is serious. So it took that broken leg for him to cost correct, right? And guess what? 
it, it, it went to he finally got a job in Covenant University. Maybe he's still in Covenant University now, I'm not sure. But now he's a professor. Uh, he, you know, he went to he, he went on crutches to Covenant University and he got <laughs> the job as a lecturer. Since that day, I just told myself, God, I beg, I don't need a broken leg to obey you. Just just say it a good one. I don't I don't have to <laughs> I don't need a broken leg. So you, you see the the, the 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 place of prompt obedience now in fact even for him to sustain a broken leg it's even because of the love of god you know so, somebody else might just keep making the money in fact you're you even doing great things you're you're even sponsoring the cause of the gospel you are doing all of these things whereas god is not there you know and, and then you think you're cozy everything is just fine so it is even the love of god that will even make him help make uh, god go to the extent of break uh, uh, allowing him to have a broken leg so he could cause correct so do you want to be like me that you don't need a broken leg before you obey God? Just, just have this flexible heart. Just have this, this free mind. And when he's saying sit down, you sit down. When it's saying stand up, you stand up. Even when you don't understand, it's not easy, right? But that's why we have grace. So that you know, your, your, your life will be way more enjoyable if you can readily listen to God and obey him. And instead of trying to rationalize whatever is talking is is telling you, right? So since that encounter, I just said, God, I beg, I don't need my leg to be broken. I don't even need anything. I don't even need my screen to be scratched before I know I need to follow you. Just help me. Just help me to be sensitive and obedient to you. Once you say it, let me do it and let me let's just keep it going that way. And that is the easiest way to enjoy your life. All right. So we see, we see that um we see. That is that obedience, that promptness in obeying. Okay, so we go to another another attitude we see uh, with with an apostolic person. Uh, you know, talking about the apostolic mindset is adaptability and compassion. You know, the apostolic mindset reflects an ability to adapt to various situations and connect with people from all walks of life. And that's why Paul said he has he has learned to abound and abase. So if there is plenty, we go flex them, like they say. If there is nothing. We are we are fine, like whatever it is, whatever it is. Now, guess what? Even beyond being a Christian or beyond being a, an apo, being apostolic or being an apostle, in my personal life, I've discovered that you know you can easily you can easily um you can easily live if you can adapt. If the weather is cold, no wala. If it is hot, fine. If you are in Nigeria, no stress. If you are in Japan, no no wala. If you go to Australia, anywhere we go. We adapt so that way you won't have to. I mean, nothing. No, I mean, nothing can get to you. Like you just whatever it is, you you just um you just find a way of blending and you're just going. And that is a very nice attitude to be apostolic because God may be sending you to a very difficult terrain, a place you would naturally not go. God may be telling you to go and marry one brother that that maybe that you you would never liked him for one day, you know, and that and you know it is God telling you so. You just have to blend. And guess what? Whatever God wants you to do, that is the best thing you can do. That is the best thing you can do. I mean, time and time again, that is the best thing. Down the line, you'll see it for yourself, right? So that, that that's extremely important. So adaptability and compassion. And we saw that playing out in the life of Paul. Like he said in 1 Corinthians 9.22, to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. So, I remember when we went to uh, <laughs> went to uh, for uh, for NYSC. I, I went to NYSC in Kat for NYSC in Katsina State, and then I, I was living in the family house because I was the state prayer secretary. And there was this we had all kinds of believers from everywhere. I mean, there you so you you see some Christian stuff, and you be like, God, is this one even born again? You know. So there you see all kinds of Christians, and but then as an apostolic person, right? It's not the time to start castigating and judging and everything. So all you have to do there is to show them example. And then after some time, you see some of them aligning that, oh, okay, I thought I was, a, I've been a Christian all my life. But I never knew that. If I, if personally, I was challenged in, at NYC. I saw people, I thought I was a caring person, but I saw people like Donato Ayuba, the evangelist secretary, who was so compassionate. Like, like he, he, he cares like a mother, like brother, he cares like a mother and i'm like god <laughs> I, I have to learn so you see to the weak you become you become like weak not like not not that you're weak right but you you can you can keep your strength to yourself and 
you know, come to their level and you might be able to help them up. I mean, that has happened a lot of times. But then if you cannot get your own strength out of the way so you can reach out to people, you will end up losing them. You end up not having any impact on them. And that is an apostolic thing to do. Now, maybe because I'm using the example of Paul, you might just think that it is one high thing. No, it's just simple thing. It may just be right there in church, right there in Power and Glory Tabernacle. Maybe there's a brother, maybe there's a sister that is always on our own, there's always on his own, or that is always, that somehow, I mean, it, it just all you just need is to look around and, the intentional, you know, we saw intentionality as part of the attitude, right? As we we're reading the, the text, right? So you have to be intentional. You have to be observant. You have to look around. You have to, you have to see, you know, I don't know. I've said this a lot of times that one of my, one of the things I do is anywhere I get to, I look for that one person or that group of people that nobody wants to talk to. And I intentionally approach them. And, you know, that way, because you see, Till it is till we all come, right? If 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 99 of us come and one person is outside, it, we have not all come. And that is why nobody should be left behind. That is why uh, church is not a place where we do uh like they say. It's not a, it's not a partisan thing where, okay, it's, this is my clique, this is my group. No, if you're doing that, you're wrong. You know, nobody should be left behind. So anywhere I get to, I'm observant, like, okay, who who is that brother that nobody wants to talk to? Then I get close. And then from from there, you you win and one, one muscle. The bro, it may even be an, a brother in Christ already, right? Who feels who is feeling, you know, like an outcast. Who is feeling not be, you know, like they don't belong to the group, you know, uh, and you know, have grafting them in is extremely important. And that is that is the way of an of an apostolic person, right? Nobody is left behind. Nobody is left behind. And after ability and compassion is one thing for the apostolic person. So to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men. So you are not becoming the weak so that you can become, you can be permanently weak. It's not even that you are ever weak, right? Because you are doing that so you can gain the weak, so you can bring them to the place of strength. And I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Of course, you cannot save all. So you'll be deceiving yourself. To save all, of course. Remember this. You should remember of, if, or if you have not heard about the story of pastor story, like when he was an undergraduate and he, he felt that you know so why can't solve the perishing and I'm in in you know like studying chemical engineering, and he was almost going to abandon his academics. But then, thank God for intervention. He he discovered that see before you before you came, people have been dying, and after you go, they will still be dying. So finish this thing, and thank God that he finished. So it is because of his finishing now. That is still able to 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 bless us, you know, with with with, with um is with, with his ministry, you know. So um, we can we can win some. We can only win some. We can't win everybody, and that is why all hands have to be on deck because the people I can reach, you cannot reach them. You may not be able to reach them, and those you can reach, I may not be able to reach them. So God has put all of us in specific areas of influence, in specific spheres of influence, in specific regions, and of course, there's also the intentionality of God in dispersing all of us to the ends of the earth. So when you find yourself in America, it's not time to to come and start flexing and start and just forget about who you are, or if you find yourself anywhere. In the world right it is not time to start um you know you know taking good pictures and posing and all that yeah fine do that if you can but don't forget the core that god is intentional about where he's sending you to right and you have to do what he has told you to do all right so we also see urgency of the gospel as another attitude so it's like it's like fire burning, like in the life of Paul, right? To the point that he, he, told, he put woe upon himself, like woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. I'm not sure if I'm able to say that, right? But that's just to tell you the extreme Paul went. It, it, that thing was so real to him that he could go to that extreme to, to, to actually, you know, say woe unto him if he did not preach the gospel. So the urgency of the gospel, right? The apostolic mindset is driven by a profound sense of urgency, a profound sense of urgency to share the gospel with others so to know that every single person we come across is a is a potential believer is a potential christian and and that might only happen through our encounter with them of course even that does not always happen but you, you want to you want to position yourself to to make that happen very easily right so paul expresses again in first corinthians nine sixteen, 
it has a deep sense of responsibility. So like it feels responsible for preaching the gospel. It has a deep sense of responsibility and accountability attached to the prog proclamation of the gospel where he said, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yeah, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. That's like an extremist that, you know, but... I mean that that's the reality of the gospel. The gospel is that it should we should have that sense of urgency attached to the gospel. All right. So another another attitude, another attitude of the apostolic person that we see in the life of Paul is readiness to act. Okay, so far I've talked about you know that the fact being apostolic is beyond title and posturing. It is it is about obedience to the heavenly call. It is about adaptability and compassion, coming to people's levels, uh, uh, putting up, being empath empath empathetic. I think is it empathetic or empathetic, something like that. You know, be putting yourself in other people's shoes, and you know, feeling what the feel. Even the Bible tells us that we should mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice. Like under, try to understand, see things from the worldview of others, so you can you can be in a very good position to help them. All right. So, uh, uh, so adaptability and compassion. Then I've just talked about the urgency of the gospel to the, that we even make someone like Paul, you know, uh, uh, you know, feel that responsible, that accountable as to say woe unto him if he did not preach the gospel. So the next point is readiness to act. Of course, that's very close to prompt obedience that I talked about the other time. Readiness to act, not, uh, you know, wasting time. You know, a lot of people, th there's this idea called analysis paralysis by analysis or analysis paralysis meaning that i mean i have that tendency people who are perfectionistic also have that kind of tendency before you do something you, you weigh the options you do this and that and in the process of doing all the analysis i mean the essence of it by the time you are ready to finally do it maybe time has gone because there's a time for everything right i mean god bless you if, the time, if time has not really gone and you could still redeem the time maybe that's something but as for, so uh, all you just need to make any decision is be sure that god is the one leading you and of course with the confirmation from other people around that yes this is the way to go because in the multitude of in the multitude of counsel there is safety so once you're sure of that just go even if it doesn't make sense to you, even if you feel inadequate just like they say do it afraid and then you see everything evening out you know along the line you know one experience i've had i've always wanted to have a youtube channel where i teach mathematics because you know i mean in in this global era right you want to and that's even the same for the gospel, right? You want to put the gospel out there. And that's why we need all the help we can get to publish this gospel. Because other people are using this, uh, these platforms to do all kinds of rubbish. And they are even making money out of these things, you know. And but for, for those of us who have so substance, you have the gospel, you have you have some skills that can actually go out there. So I've always wanted to have this YouTube uh, channel thing. I, I could teach you to uh, math on YouTube or you know, share some of my skills and things like that on YouTube. But then I'm, I'm also this analysis paralysis prone person. Though God is helping me gradually, you know, I, I, because I, I just felt, I mean, I'm a text person. I just like to edit uh, writings. When it comes to uh, mounting camera and doing all these things, I mean, it's not my thing. So, but gradually I'm easing into, into of course, even now what I still do is I, I try to look for the simplest Thing I can put together to do what I have to do, so I don't I don't want complications as much as possible. But all I'm just saying is this: that when it comes to following God, right, you don't you don't have to analyze too much. Of course, it it does. That is not to say that you don't have your brain to reason. Even God said in Isaiah, He said, "Come and let's reason together." Even God wants to reason with. You. If you have questions, ask Him; He will answer you. But don't waste time trying to weigh options when God have, has given an instruction. Don't waste your time trying to save. See if it is good or bad. If it is God, it is good. It can be good and not be God, right? But as far as it is God, it is good, even if it doesn't feel good, right? So readiness to act is key um, in, in, to an apostolic person. So the apostolic mindset is characterized by a readiness to respond to the call of God without delay, without delay. Because the Yorubas will say, Ijafarali, like it is, it, is, it is dangerous to hesitate. Hesitation is, is 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 dangerous, all right? Especially when you are relating with God. And, and just like we've heard several times, right, that 
um, God is not in a hurry because one day is like a thousand days to him and a thousand days is like a day to him. So if you if you think you're not ready to do what he wants you to do, he will raise stones. And of course, imagine the story of Ketrin Kuma. There was this thing that we hear that the person that was supposed to carry the anointing, she carried a powerful anointing that she carried. The person was was not a, was not available so god had to raise ketrin kuma and that's why if you if you watch ketrin kuma uh i mean for a deeper light boy like me it's like uh, uh no 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 how can god anoint this kind of person but you see we are not god is god is not a respecter of persons so if you think if you who think you have everything figured out you have it all cut out if you're not willing god can go and raise the pro the that aristo girl you know on campus and turn that and she become one powerful evangelist or the courtist boy or whatever person that you can even castigate. God will just raise them up to do his thing. And that is why we cannot afford to, to, to hesitate, right? We need to be ready to act from time to time. In Acts chapter 16, verses 9 and 10, you know, Paul receives a vision urging him to go to Macedonia. And without hesitation, he obeys. You know, he already, I mean, for, for, for someone like me, right? I'm this person who is, I like to plan things out. I don't, before I do something, I take my time to plan it properly. You know, so if you come and then you want to interrupt my plan, we can, it can lead to Wahala, you know, but then that's not the way to follow God, right? To follow God, you need to have a pliable mind. You have to be, you have to be flexible. Like, I think I always say this uh, thing from one of my friends who would say, blessed are the flexible for they shall not break. If you fo in following God, you have to be very flexible. You have to be very flexible. You don't have to be set in your ways. When it comes calling, be ready to move just like Paul. And of course, I'm sure Paul was a strong-willed person, as you could, you could already see. But he got to this point where whatever God was saying, you know, as a soldier, you know, he, I mean, he just obeyed the command, even when it did not make sense to him. So because he already had his plan to go somewhere, and then he saw a vision, and he, he understood that it was God talking to him to go elsewhere. All right? So the apostolic mindset is characterized by a readiness to respond to the call of God without delay. In Acts chapter 16, verses 9 and 10, Paul receives a vision urging him to go to Macedonia and without hesitation, he obeys. Uh, in Acts 16, verse 9, it says, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. Verse 10, and after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. You know, they didn't just go to Macedonia because they, because they saw a vision. They, they saw the vision and, of course, they checked to God that God, is, is Macedonia the next place? We had our own plans, right? And then said, uh, assuredly, gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach unto them. So it was not just because of the vision, but it was because, of course, they saw the vision. And when they checked with God, they, they had a nod that, yeah, please go. That's where to, that's the next place to go to. And that is why they went that way. All right. So readiness to act is an attitude of the apostolic person. You know, don't forget, in case you have not got the gist, you are apostolic. You are supposed to be apostolic. You may be an apostle. And you may not be an apostle, but you are supposed to be apostolic because we have all been sent on the great commission to go to all the nations of the earth and to preach the gospel to every creation and to preach the gospel to every creation. So you are supposed to be apostolic. So the fact that I'm using Paul does not exclude you because you can already put Paul on that high pedestal and think, oh, he's in his own league, so I can't be in that league. No, in that your little corner, in that your small class, in that your university, in that your workplace, you are supposed to have an apostolic mindset. And you you know, sometimes God will just tell you, okay, turn to that person. I, I keep telling you about my story, how I was, I was teaching in class one day, and then I just had this nudge to interact with some guys. And from there, I got talking with, 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 with like five of them. After class, they followed me. And after some time, one of them beca became, began to come to church. And then, you know, with all whatever he's been through, over time, he be, I, I mean, I'm just trying to say that just be open. It doesn't, it, it doesn't think most of the, most of these things don't even happen, have to happen in church. They can happen. Maybe you're a footballer playing football and then on the, on the, in the football field, people just see your life that, ah, this guy is different and they want to, they, they, and they see that, that, that you're producing results they can't even produce or they just see something about your life and then they come ar along and you have opportunity to witness to them, you know. So and that is why the, the way we live our lives is one of the most powerful ways to to reach out 
to people. All right. So that is really important. So the so Paul and his guys saw a vision and they confirmed with the God that yes, it's it's Macedonia o'clock, and they went to Macedonia. Okay. All right. So another thing here is spiritual dis spiritual discernment over human counsel. Of course, that has been implied even in the last point I just raised. But I think it's it's worth highlighting spiritual discernment over human counsel. So you can see, uh, you know, you have. It, I, I like to talk about the story of the young and old prophets in the in the Old Testament, right? You know, uh, God told the new, the old, the young prophet, old and young prophet. God told the young prophet, "This is what I want you to do." And then later, the old prophet came and told him, "You know, God also speaks to me, right, and everything." And so, I mean, in essence, right, we have to be sure that the, whatever counsel we are taking is a, is in alignment with God. You know, it's an, in alignment with God. And that's why, thank God, we are blessed in the house with people who have gone ahead of us, who can actually, you know, guide us with their experience and things like that. But ultimately, whatever advice you are taking should be, uh, you know, it should it should not just be advice from a human perspective. It should be, uh, it should be God-given counsel, God-ordained counsel. So spiritual discernment over human counsel is one thing we saw in the life of Paul, and that is one attitude of the apostolic. So the apostolic mindset prioritizes spiritual discernment over human wisdom or counsel. So sometimes, maybe, I mean, it was good to Paul at that point in time when we talked about the Macedonian thing. It, was, it looks cool to go to Asia, but God came and said Macedonia, and then they went to Macedonia. So it, that that's really important. So as Paul asserts in Galatians 1, 15 to 18, uh, in first, I mean, I'm reading from Galatians chapter 1, 15 to 18. Galatians chapter 1, 15 to 18. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. You know, I mean, in this Galatians, he was talking, uh, he was writing to the Galatians and everything. And, you know, he, he had to, it's, it's like kind of, you know, he always has this tendency of, of defending his apostleship and things like that. So he was recounting his experience so far. And he got to this point. He said, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. So the time was ripe and he was called by God. Verse 16 says, to reveal his son in me. So that's our work as apostolic people, right? God wants to reveal his son in us. He wants to reveal Jesus in us. To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen immediately now you see the word immediately keeps coming up in every in, in issues relating to paul right immediately so in the uh, macedonia case we saw immediately even in the cage of it immediately keeps coming up but when it pleased god god who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that i might preach him among the heathen immediately i conferred not with flesh and blood Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. All right. So, you know, he had an encounter on his way to Damascus. So he went to Damascus. And from there, after he had been prayed for and his eyes were open, he went to Arabia. And by the time he was done with Arabia, he returned to Damascus. And see, guess what? You know, he didn't go to, it was maybe the tendency was to go to Jerusalem immediately, but he needed some time to hide, maybe like one or two or three years or so, um, looking at the scriptures. So he had to hibernate go and you know go and learn right and in verse 18 then after three years oh yeah i mean it's even here after three years i went up to jerusalem to see peter so i mean it, maybe the easy thing to do immediately was oh now i'm born again let me quickly go to jerusalem let me go and show them that yes uh, i have become a christian no he went to arabia first then returned to damascus then after three years he went up to to see the leaders of the church in Jerusalem. So, I mean, these days you have people who get born again and then they want to start uh, manifesting immediately. So, no matter no matter how clever we are, no matter how how our growth may be, we need to know our time for 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 doing certain things because God has ordained a time for everything. He has ordained a time for us to be. So, sometimes we I know there's this story about the bamboo tree when it's planted at first, maybe the first three or four years, nothing is happening. It's like, it's just there. And people can be abusing the bamboo tree. Like, Oh, what, what is wrong with this one? It's been here for three years. Nothing is happening. And guess what? All those, all that well, what it's doing is it's standing roots all over the place, sending roots all over the place. Once the three or four years gets completed, 
you know the growth becomes so serious and then people are wondering wow what is it? what is happening here so and that that that's also the power of process even paul had to go through all this process and part of the process is hiding to study to learn for some time and knowing that oh it, it's time to show off i mean to show forth rather all right you know so never went out to okay verse 18 already then after three years i went up to jerusalem so he didn't go to jerusalem at first he had to go to jerusalem after three years that's a lot of time then after three years i went up to jerusalem to see peter and abode with him 15 days so i mean here we this underscores the apostolic reliance on divine guidance above all else so probably the this the short thing to do immediately you get born again is you want to go and show yourself to the apostle that yeah i'm part of you guys now i mean uh, can you give me one church to manage or can you i mean like that so paul understood the place of process in all these things and he only showed up to the apostles when it was necessary so this underscores the apostolic reliance on divine gui guidance above all else all right so even if you are taking human guidance be sure that it aligns with god okay so um yeah i mean it's been a very interesting one as far as i think <laughs> so uh and so i've been talking about the apostolic mandate and you know, we've seen some very instructive stuff like, you know, that being apostolic is a beyond title and posturing. It's about obedience to the heavenly call. It's about adaptability and compassion. So how can you reach out to the people you are not compassionate about? How can you reach out to people who you judge? You know, one thing I've developed these days is when, when I see someone misbehaving and I, I don't like that. So one way, one way, one easy way to align, to, 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 to come to help such people is pray. It's difficult for you to pray for someone and 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 be bitter or judgmental towards them at the same time. The best you can be is to, you know, I, I, and I think we also need to learn this skill of of correcting people without judging them. It's a tricky thing, but it's possible. So you know, the person knows that you're coming from a place of love, not from a place of not like you're you're stand, you're sitting on a high horse and looking down on them. No, it's a very tricky thing. You're firm about the about the truth, but then. They know that it's coming from a place of love. It's very tricky. And, and that's why we have the Holy Spirit to help us, right? So adaptability and compassion, very important. Then we have to talk about the urgency of the gospel. We need to know that time is running out and God needs us as agents, uh, you know, to, 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 to spread the gospel. Then readiness to act is another thing. Like, don't hesitate. Once you are sure it's God leading you, don't hesitate. And how can you be ready? How can you know that? without being spiritually discerning so we need spiritual discernment over human counsel not conferring with the flesh you know god has spoken to you and then you are holding a conference with your village people <laughs> you know what i mean you are just wasting time you are just once you're sure it's god of course the only other conference you can have is have a conference with the people of god to to you know make to to ground you in that reality that god has shown you and then uh, don't hesitate to move on from there. So, I mean, that's how it's been. Uh, the apostolic mindset is a deep, unwavering commitment to the divine call. Unwavering commitment to the divine call. And it is characterized by prompt obedience, adaptability, urgency, readiness to act, and reliance on spiritual discernment. And that is really important. I pray that as we have heard this, mm -hmm. Uh, the Holy Spirit will, will help us in every area we are still struggling. In every area, we, we, it, maybe you are this type where the the word of the Lord comes and you're very sure it's God's word, and you start thinking about other things that will help you not to focus on that. Or you know, maybe you, you the people, the same people you are you are supposed to reach out to you. You feel that you are you are above them and you cannot come to their level. You know, all of these things are barriers. Now, no ego, no status, no position is. It's, it's good enough to prevent you from reaching out to those God has sent you to. And, you know, all these apostolic attitudes we need to develop. And dear Father, we exhort your name for the grace and privilege we have to listen to your word this evening. We pray that as apostolic people will ha help us to have all this mindset, the mindset of obedience, uh, urgency, not hesitating when you when when you when you instruct us, um, being compassionate and, and and taking our egos out of the way to reach out to people, it will help us to be all of this, to do all this, to have this attitude in every area we are struggling. We pray for your strength. We pray that you will you will strengthen us. You will you will strengthen our feebleness. You strengthen our hands. 
in the mighty name of Jesus and will help us to be bold witnesses for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you, everybody, for listening. See you next week. God bless you. Um, I don't want to go over everything he has said. I trust you heard him. I want us to take questions. Anyone with a question before I... So that I may not ask my own questions. Praise God. So anyone with a question... Brochola, any question? Can I ask you, my? Amen. Is there okay, me any question? I will ask you. I will ask you. And you know my questions, they are intercontinental ballistic questions. Is there any okay? Any question? Generate one. Generate a question. Mori Reoya, give me one question. Generate one question. Where's the microphone now? Beatrice, I see you. Hide under the chair. Just put your head under that chair so that I can run away. Oh, yeah? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I want to ask, how do we overcome fear. How do you overcome fear? Yes, after we uh, received the mandate to go and preach. Okay, for some people, um, I, I clearly got the part of not hesitating when you've confirmed that this is God giving you these instructions to go and do this. But uh, considering the terrain of where you've been sent to, she this foot area. Or con no, no, no. <laughs> or considering the kind of humans that uh, you probably will be coming across, sometimes the devil might want to bring fear into your heart. It's not that sometimes. It does. Uh -huh. So it's a look, it's a constant thing. It's not a big deal. Just expect him to be there. You, know, says, you know, remember the story of the um, high priest who stood to minister. Satan was standing beside him. So the way you want to preach, you'll be there with you to tell you, uh, are you sure they called you? Are you, the, you did you see Jesus? You, let me remind you of somebody who tried this thing. He caught four dirty slaps from this set of people, go, 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 to ever buy. It's, it's, it's normal. Satan, that you will not see him there. Maybe that means they didn't send you. If I, if you may even, if I, that means you were there on his behalf. You won't see him there. But if it's God who sent you, Satan will be there. So, assume it's given. So, what's the question? So, uh, how do you go about it? Why not tripping? Why not? Okay, let me, let me throw it open. Start, Kemi. Give it to her. How did you overcome your own fears? I want practical answer. Don't give me a hypothetical as God as the Bible says. Don't give me what the Bible says. How did you? That is still the Bible. But God has not given us this. That is, I said, that was destruction. You see, Pastor Dash talked about prompt obedience. I said, I don't want Bible. Tell me what or how you overcame. I'm trying to... Yeah, me pay. Oh, love evangelism. Oh, she evangelism. But so how did you overcome fear? Okay, like Pastor Dancy said. No. I said, how did you? I'm not interested in what Pastor Dancy said now. I speak the word of God. Eh, eh. Then from there. You say you speak the word strength. of God. Yes. Eh, eh. What, which word of God did you speak? For God has not given me the that's what you're going to tell somebody who's not born again that God has not given you spirit of fear. No, you said while going there to do the evangelism. No, I I'm said, how did you overcome? You. I'm not asking you what you were to say. How did you overcome? Sorry, my question is the brother Brasher going to be. I had many, so please give Gabriel. I had Gabriel say no. Not, okay, Sanika is going to kill you. 
God saved you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, sir. I used to be fearful too. Then I started following elders. Okay. Yes, sir. Every 25th, I go for evangelism. 25th? Of December. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if yes, sir. I follow the kingdom project. So I've washed out, I've seen people that are hard depth in that area. So intentionally, I follow them to see how they are going to start. Because of the truth, what am I going there to tell them? Then I watch them, they start this way, they start this way, and it really helped me. Another thing that also helped me is prayer, sir. Prayer, I declared I have boldness. I, after I am charged then, I've watched elders, I follow them to that field. Then I've prayed them. It helped my confidence. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> and that's not what I wanted to hear. I, so, bro, mo, mo, Murire. Yes, sir. Um, you are squeezing your face. No, 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 I'm not squeezing my face. I'm that means you are not too happy. You are not too... Oh, there's, okay. No, there's a difference. I'm squinting to see it clearly. Okay. But I'm not squeezing my face. Okay, so... Um, I am asking this question particularly because sometimes I still battle fear. And I'm asking also particularly for those who will be doing this for the first time. Um, let me say, I got a mandate from God to do um, very queer evangelism. And I've been doing it to a very good extent, diligently. So most times when I get into the shuttle, I preach the gospel. But um, recently, I felt it should go beyond just um, school shuttle while I go into taxes too. I try to, but then ah, it hasn't been easy. So that was why I particularly asked the question. Of course, when I get to the shuttle, not like I know anybody there, or not, or not like it is a, but then it is quite, it is, yeah, easy. I can just, in a few words, I just say, God speak through me. Uh, let's minister unto these souls and then I start talking and then it's all good. But when it gets to out there, probably I'm in the market and I'm in a taxi and I'm trying to eat. Um, I battle a lot of fear. Before. Of course, I've been able to do it once, twice, three times, a couple of times, but not like I would, not like I usually do. That was, so I'm, that was why I asked to know how, because of course, there is no elder that is going with me in the taxi to go and um, to precede that. So, and for those who would be doing it for the first time, too, this coming Friday, well, maybe they will You be are nailed down already in that area. They will follow you. <laughs> so don't worry. You follow him. <laughs> so, you have no problem. Bra, Bra Gabriel, a question from you. Okay, uh, okay. I don't know why they're just delivering those I'm um, trying to catch this night. Ah, look out. Somebody have been praying. Good evening. Okay. Good evening. Uh, the, like the last point he gave before he rounded up, he said, be sure that the counsel you are taking is in alignment with God's word. Ben, is it so good? that got me thinking because uh, like there's an instance in the Bible where most of the prophets, like let's say 90% of them, were saying something like they were deceived. So they were sent to deceive. So how do you like have that confirmation? Because when it gets to when two, three people are advising you, and then and, and, and the demon and the demon was on top of the three of them. So and your own conviction <laughs> now, how am I to like how will I say it? Like be confident in what I have and be able to like disregard all of their counsel or Okay, number one. Those prophets that um, Satan gave access to were not following God. They were it was everybody in Israel knew they were following. They were the prophets that ate at the table of um, uh, eh? Jezebel. The, no, Jezebel was the one who made the plate, the, was the food, who, who concurred food. But they, they were Ahab's and Jezebel's prophets. And they were many. And they were well known. They probably used to ride BMW and Benz. Everybody in town knew them. Sure, you understand. They were not servants of God. So 
If a person comes around, you must have been observing people. Are you with me? When you see somebody who is double-minded, you see a person who tells lies, yet he prophesy, you know, you should be able to know that this one is not likely. You see, you understand. But of course, the bottom line is, do you yourself know scriptures? Because one of the reasons why we are doing this Bible exercise that we read every time is to get you acquainted with scriptures. So that when something that is not there comes up, you can quickly discern, no, 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 no. Then you go back and check. Well, I found it somewhere in Matthew. Okay. You go th read it through and say, yes, this is not right. It helps. But when you don't know your right from left, ah, you know, I saw there's somebody in your family, there's a woman. Uh, I can see, I can see her. It looks like, uh, you said, it's green in color. Uh -huh. It's a green color. Uh, must be, uh, is it my auntie? Is it my auntie? You are, you are finished. <laughs> are you getting me? So that helps a lot. So you get it. Praise God. So look for godly people. That's why one reason why you must surround yourself with godly people. People you have stayed with, you know them. Um, they do have vested interest. For example, uh, uh, this is going to be funny. Um, you, you, I'm using it with that of uh, you like a sister. You know, usually the those in ESCO, when we're in school, I have advantage. And uh, even fortunately, the sister is being hired by the president. Are you with me? I got me the pressy. I like sister Ade. Ah, he says it's not the will of God. <laughs> because he has a vested interest. So it's not going to give a godly counsel. Am, am I making sense? But you cannot know, Abi. You just follow one new and trust God for another sister Ade. Amen. So you should, like your robot say also, um, the person who is going to sew your suit or your agbada, work his own agbada, how did he sew it? So a person who doesn't have a lifestyle of accuracy is not likely to give you accurate counsel. You sure you understand? <laughs> and he has my said interest. And he's not following God. Well, you just get to know. Praise God. Start like me, dear. I like to hear you talk. Where is your husband? Is DPO in the church? God bless you. Uh -huh. Yes, I love you. Give her a microphone now. What's the matter? You do have a question. Good evening, sir. Can I ask you my own question? Can I ask you my question? Which one do you want? Your own question or my question? Choose one. I I to I didn't really stay in church like that. Oh. I went somewhere. Okay. Yes. exam question, Daddy. I said, in class. She had a question me. So, so that means you are ready to take my question then. And you have to answer my question. Okay. Because I gave you two options, either yours or mine. Are you, can I, can I talk? Okay. All right. Who is an apostle? An apostle is... Um... Or rather, what are the characteristics of an apostle? They are at least from Apostle Paul, like as in. So as they are, they are, okay, as in, as in, man, for me, problem. <laughs> <laughs> so an apostle is someone that uh, has uh, probably been under the tutelage of Jesus Christ. Uh, so uh, we we were apostles that never had us. We were running when Jesus tutelage them. So maybe in our world today, uh -huh. there are people that have. They have taken time to 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 stay under um, under the sound teachings of Jesus Christ, and that makes them apostle. I'm in trouble. Uh, Call a friend. People that have been called 
So, he called. So why you could don't call? Oh, I shall post. No, we are all called. Eh, so all of us are post to now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's go, yeah. Oh yeah. Who, who has a shiny face there? Who has? I don't want to give up. I want, I want, give, give brochure. Somebody hired brochure. Inshallah. Abi, you have just been spending your whole days singing. Oh, yeah. Who is, what are the characteristics of an apostle? Um, an apostle, first of all, one of the major characteristics I know of an apostle is he has the blueprint for the building of the church, the body of Christ. He has a blueprint. Yes, sir. So a teacher cannot have a blueprint. <laughs> oh yeah now the teacher can have a blueprint that's what you're telling me <laughs> well give me Ephesians sorry Revelations 2 verse um, verse 2 2 2 Rev Rev 2 2 what does it say Roshala I know thy works and thy labor and thy Patience, and how thou canst not bear them, which are which are evil. which are evil, and thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. So that means they tried them. They said the Bible said they tried them. That means they, they used certain metrics yes. to try them, and they fell short. So what are those metrics? Okay, you can't answer it. It's beyond your realm of scope. Um, look for somebody you can, um, you can like. Uh, Bro, Gideon is Gideon in church? Ah, he has not spoken for weeks. Bro, Gideon, let us do just yeah, yeah, let's bail us. Do what Gideon did in the Bible. He was take microphone. He was the one who delivered Israel. What are those metrics? That when we look at this guy and we try him, we can say, ah, oh, this is an apostle. And then we use it to try on that person and say, ah, oh, this one is a fake guy. Uh, they, they have a good understanding of Christ himself. A good understanding? Yes. So, so me, that I'm here, I don't have good understanding of Christ. I think, um, for me personally, uh -huh. my understanding of apostle, apost, uh, apostle is sent ones. Yes. So, and uh, the disciples of Jesus, the 12 disciples, they were his apostles. Amen. So, sometimes I ask myself the question, because after the persecution, uh, during the persecution of the church, people scattered and, and everywhere they go, they, they, they preach they the preached. gospel of Christ. Yes. So, sometimes I ask, are this, should we call these ones apostles too? Are you asking me? <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm oh, you're trying to. Trying to okay. Yeah, yeah just. So, think. but based uh, my understanding that those who, from from those first apostles, they had a relationship with Christ. They, they, they have worked with Him in the flesh. So they are called apostles. For Apostle Paul, he had a revelation of Jesus Christ. So from there, he's, he's uh, known as an apostle. However, redefining really apostleship. The way I see it is people that uh, move, they, they, are, they are sent specific, specifically to certain groups of people. So that's the way I, I understand. Now, maybe that is uh, correct or not, I don't know. But I think people that are actually specifically sent to particular groups of people, I, can, I, I think they are first. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you go, man. Think about the question. And then we'll meet next week, Tuesday, God helping us. And we'll trash the question again. Um, I will not say you're right or wrong, but that you're right that they are sent, yes. And, um, and they are specific, specific instructions. Are you with me? But there is specific instructions, for example, cannot be. God sent me to go and raise millionaires. 
You know, we've had people talk like that. And uh, apostles of prosperity. Uh -huh. But they're not apostles of the Christ. Because yes, yes. uh -huh. you, you, be, you can be sent. But whether Jesus was one who sent you, it's a different ballgame. Are you with me? But all the characteristics of those that Jesus sent, we have to find out what are they. Because if we don't find out, we'll not be able to try them that claim to be apostles. In the days of this man, John, men were already claiming apostleships. In the days of Paul, men were already claiming to be apostles. Okay, uh, please, sir. So, uh, are you saying that those characteristics must differentiate them, a, a kind of character that differentiates them from other believers? Yes. Okay. They, are, they, they have distinct characteristics. Okay, okay. Are you, are, are you with me? It's like you want you to draw um, a graph and uh, all your points are scattered. That means something's wrong with your, with your experiment. Are you with me? I mean, if, you're, if, you're, if, you, if your experiment was supposed to give you a sinusoidal wave, if I'm correct, are you with me? And you're getting a concave. Then you have to go back to the lab. But, but please, can I also say that they have teaching and prophetic they work with uh, this. Uh, we'll meet next week. Okay. <laughs> Do your research. Oh, eh, eh, time has gone. Okay. They can, they can mic. For Pastor Dele. Pastor Dele is asking a question. Go ahead, get down where. His contribution was that I think there was. I think there is a way the word has used the word you are judging me. You okay. are judging you are me. judging me. That we must not allow them to box us into. Like Pastor like Pastor Dansu said, people should know that we are addressing their problem out of a good heart. However, I also think that it is not every time that we can have the privilege of creating an impression that our judgment of their lifestyle is coming out of a good act. People are bound to see correction as attack, especially when we have the opportunity to talk to them in person. My question, what did Jesus mean in context? I, I'm, I'm, not even, I'm not even able to unpack the, what he just finished saying. All right, I think to just make it simple, what he's trying to say is that many times, like Pastor Dan Because when you go for evangelism, yes. okay, let me unpack it. When you go for evangelism and you say, it's not good to, to fornicate. It's not good to do that. They will say you are judging them. Yes. And the Bible says that should not judge. Then you are boxed into a corner. Then you back off. That's no, no, that's a different ball game. Yeah. I'm only using that as an example. Yes. Define what? Yes. Because where Paul said, Paul did not go talking about uh, you are a sinner, you are a king. No, 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 no. If you pay, that, if you pay attention to what he said, he said God has, con he has condemned, or rather he has concluded all men as sinners. The only solution is for them to give their life to Christ. So he said he kept preaching Christ crucified. Why was he crucified? He was crucified for our sins. Is that not so? Whatever it is that you have done is irrelevant. The important thing that you are a sinner, if you don't repent, the wrath of God rest upon your head. So that is John chapter 3, you know. So you, you've just shared, shared that. Dickie, don't go anywhere. Share, you know, so just share simple gospel and that the Lord is interested in intervening your life and turn your life around. Praise the Lord. Just preach simple Jesus Christ. And for me, I, yes, God so loved the world, he gave. Love motivated God to give. And nothing is as disappointing when somebody, uh, I'll use the word, uh, does not appreciate the love and sacrifice we make for him or her. If God can send Jesus to die so that you will not die, a fearful judgment awaits whosoever does not accept that. Of course, God, God says, hey, are you making me afraid? I think you should be afraid. Praise God. But love is overriding Thing. God will help us and teach us. Praise God. I think that's fair, sir. There's another mic there, sir. 
Wait, wait, wait. There's another mic. Because I want you to finish your thought. Just hold on. No, I think I should ask the question so that it can, because it's seen. No, same Pastor is addressing another problem. Okay. He's not addressing that yet. Pastor, please. Yes, especially about this evangelism. I just give a practical example of the lady who worked with the uh, Wema Bank. She has been very kind to me, and I wanted to find out how I would help her. Incidentally, she now said, the Muslim. The first thing I said is, how can you say, don't look like Muslim? He said, does Muslim has any look? I said, yes. They have look. They have their own look. They have to describe the look of Muslim. So they say, well, first and foremost, you are not covering your, your head. You are not doing all that. This and that you look too like part of us. This, I was just started. So today again, I went to the bank. And I said, if I give you something for your past now, that means I am not helping you because I know that all the while you, you are still a sinner in spite of your past. He said, all of us are sinners. I said, you are correct. That is the reason why Christ came, to die for <laughs> sinner. Do you want to die in your sin? Don't die in your sin. Because you have concluded in your heart that we are all sinners. And that is true. The Bible has also said that, that all have sinned and come short. And so I opened the Bible to him, to her. So what, why am I saying this is that if, if, there are, if there should be a way in which we address particular issue, please don't go and start telling, and start telling somebody that you are a sinner. You won't get the work done. You will not get the work done. Once you come with in that predisposition that you are a sinner, you have, you have, you have, you have, you won't get the mind. I thank God that she said that all, uh, all of us are sinners. I said, yes, you are correct. But this is the reason why Jesus Christ came. He came to save sinners. But until you now accept the man, she just dropped what she's doing, as if she has never had that before. I said, so what you need to do is just to come to this camp. So that, he said, she now said that, you mean, I will not sin again. I said, yes, you will not sin again as time goes on. But the first thing is that, let him forgive your sin, first and foremost. Once he forgive your sin, and you are going to a place where you are listening to the word of God, then you will discover that your sin will be cleansed. So, evangelism is very technical. Very, very technical. You don't just say, eh, you are a sinner. God wants you to give your life to Christ. This and that. They won't listen. They won't listen. We have to trust the Holy Ghost to tell us what to do, to tell us how to approach it. We must be intentional about prayer. We must be intentional about talking to the Spirit of God to lead us and to direct us. I thank God for what God did in that in the life of that girl today because I pray with her. And I have each day I went to Atala Bakadia. Each day I, I make sure that I talk to her. You have to be saved. There was a time when I said that you want to be a second wife. You are too beautiful to be a second wife. You know, we started on the note of jokes and so on. He said, Ah, sir, who told you that I'm going to marry to I said for your religious permitting. No religious permit to wife. If your husband marry you and say the it's four wives. So. Tomorrow he can say the no, religion permits four, sir. Yes. No, I, said, I said tomorrow if I say that, <laughs> I said, how do you do? Will you run away from that something? You won't run away. You can there was a time when people said that well, if you have a brother in the church, I won't mind. I said there are brothers, but you have to be part of brethren before, before you can get a brother. So all of these things are very, very Important. This, um, today she asked me to pray for her, and I was really happy. I asked her to pray prayer of confession before I can pray for her. So all of these things, don't just go and say you're a sinner. God won't you? Please, believe, trust Holy Ghost to give you direction and to direct your tongue. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, they can complete your program. All right. The question. Uh, Pastor Dele asked that, what did Jesus mean in context 
when he said, judge not, so that you will not be judged. Matthew 7. Uh, I'm not going to answer that question because it's not in line with what Pastor Danso said. We are talking there about the apostolos, the apostolic, right? This is not the apostolic thing. I'm not answering that question. It's not in line with that. So I want to keep it in things that are in line. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So um, apparently there are no questions again. My t our time is fast spent. You have a question? Okay. Um, no? But can you make it snappy in just 10 seconds? Just ask the question. In terms of the body of, body of the Christ. Well, in terms of? Bodiment of the Christ. Bodiment. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, um, no. Okay. Let me just go straight to the question. That's what I was expecting you to do. All right. What's the difference between preaching the gospel and teaching the gospel? Okay. Preaching the gospel is you making a declaration of what God has done. Are you with me? You are declaring it. Teaching is you are explaining. Are you, are you with me? Now, for those you are explaining to, are those who have a, an inquisitive mind that want to know more. Those who have never heard or do not even, have not even heard before, you preach to them. You sow a seed. Jesus loves you. I'm preaching. I'm not explaining to you what that love entails. Are you with me? I will not start to see this is, this is how God showed his love and all that. I'm teaching. But when I'm preaching, Jesus loves you. He died for you. God doesn't want you to go to hell. Jesus has paid the price. What kind of man is there again that can love a man like Jesus' life? I am preaching to you. Are you with me? But when you come down here and I'm beginning to explain to you what went into that thing he did that constitutes love, I'll be explaining it. See, you get what I'm trying to say. That's just the difference. I hope you get it. God, praise God. I think it's time for us to rise and just bless the Lord. Can we rise? Because if you stay on your seat, you are going to become acquainted with our seat for long. Just thank the Lord. And um, because he spoke about the attitude, there is an attitude, there is a disposition of people who are sent. He mentioned some of those attitudes. You are, you, are, you, are, you are flexible. He spoke about you being, you, be, you, 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 you responding to promptings. He spoke to us about, you know, directives. He spoke about, you know, um, uh, about f you know, following, following the lamp. We need to follow the Lord. He said, I became all things to all men, that I may win some. His disposition is about winning people. These are the mindset of those who are sent. He talks about intentionality. You have to be intentional. I want to pray you know, and ask God for these virtues. I ask God for these traits. And ask God that God of heaven will will minister, will infuse, will weave these things into your nature. That you will not be a careless person. You will not be a person that, uh, you know, uh, that you, 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 do, you, know, you just do things. He said, look, the gospel said, woe to me, woe betide me if I don't preach this gospel. Do you have that kind of mindset that you are committed to this one thing, which is preaching this gospel? Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, you no, know, in chapter 1, he said, I preach Christ crucified. He said to the Greeks, to the, to, to the, to the Jews, it's a stumbling block. Huh? But to, uh, to the Greeks, it's foolishness. But he said, it, it is still the power of God to salvation. This gospel of Jesus is the power of God to salvation. It is the gospel of Jesus, not the gospel of prosperity, not the gospel of good life, not the gospel Oh, of, of hellfire. No, it's the gospel of Christ. Christ came to save sinners. That is the gospel. I, can we ask the Lord of glory to help us? I want to be a committed person. I want to be committed to this one goal too. I want to be committed to this one goal. That I will be a man, I will be a woman that the fire of God will burn in my soul. That I will be committed to this. He said, I don't want to be a castaway after I've enlisted others. I want to pray for yourself. 
that you also will be saved. That the Lord of glory will show, repair, reveal himself to you. That you will not be lost. You will not pursue people and lose your own soul. I don't want my own soul to be cast away. I don't want to be cast away. Father, I'm asking for help. Lord, I'm asking for help. Help me, Lord. Paul said, if Paul could be cast away, if Paul recognized that he could be cast away, then you and I are in very, very dangerous position that we also can be cast away. It's called carelessness. It's called assumption. It's, it's called you just thinking you are okay. No one said, he that thinketh to stand should think it, lest he falls. Can you receive help from God tonight? That you will not be a castaway. And if you are having a problem knowing what to preach, can you ask the Lord help me? Can you ask the Lord help me? Teach me. Give me utterance. Take away the fears. Con I want this fear conquered. I want this fear conquered. I want this tim timidity conquered. In the name of Jesus. This attitude that says, I don't care. It's not my business. Lord, I ask you to take it away from me. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for your servant that has shared the word of God with us. Father, blessed be your holy name. In Jesus Christ's name we've prayed. And once again, heaven, Father in heaven, we give you praise and glory. Thank you for your servant that you used to speak to us about the apostolic mindset. Lord of glory, we ask for help that you will weave these thoughts and these patterns into our lives in the name of Jesus. That we no longer be men who are unintentional. We no longer be men who do not see the preaching of the gospel as unimportant. We will not be men or women who will run our agendas and life, Lord, over preparing and lose the timing of obedience. We pray, Father, that you will bring us into divine alignment in the name of Jesus. We pray for your help to be fruitful. That, Lord, in this soul opening, we are going to, we are going to, we are, we are going to succeed in it in Jesus' name. We are praying, Father, for the outing on Friday. Every fear and timidity we cast out of our hearts in Jesus' name. We recognize the enemy will come to discourage us. But Holy Ghost, we ask, you are powerful. You are more powerful than him and all of them combined together. I ask you to show up for us and encourage every heart in the name of Jesus. I could imagine when the apostles were sent out. The Bible says they went out. Lord, but when they came back, they were happy because they saw the demonstration of your power. And pray and ask that, Lord, as we go out, let there be demonstrations of your power and glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, our Father. We pray that, Lord, your servant, Lord, you will, be, you will increase him on every side in Jesus' name. Lord, whatever it is that you are not, we, are, we are still confused about, I pray that there will be clarity. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Can we take our offerings? Can we take offerings? Let's bless the Lord for tonight. God is good. And as we take the offering, um, let me pray. Father, thank you for this that we have brought. We ask that you look upon us and receive our persons in Jesus' name. Lord, this seed, I ask that you look upon him with favor. Let us speak in your presence. Remember us for good. And let no one beg for bread, even in this season, in Jesus' name. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, by the grace of God. Tomorrow, 5.30 a.m., we're going to meet um, for the morning prayer. I want to encourage you, please join us. The link is put on the PGT announcement. If you're on WhatsApp, you will see there. Set your alarm. Wake up 10 minutes before, before 5.30. That's 20 minutes after 5. So that you can take the, that 10 minutes to boot and to wake up properly. Hallelujah. So that you can join us, let us pray for the supernatural manifestation. And um, on Thursday, we'll be here for governmental prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. And on Friday, um, we, are, we are going to be meeting here. I, I, I think the meeting is here and, um, uh, yeah, Futa. Praise God. Uh, thank, the drama, thank you. Drama Unit, thank you for dramatizing the announcement.
God bless you. Can we take the benediction together? together. Signs and wonders shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall remain the temple of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Sorry I could not follow the Aki. Outside my, my design capacity. Hallelujah. <laughs>